how much do we understand about it actually, about the term meditation and how we relate to it basically. Um, probably the terminology was there for a long, long time. And, but nevertheless, now how we sort of con utilize that term and to connect with what, what one is talking about, uh, what Buddha was talking about, one could say. So to uh, connect that, I think it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, there are two ways to go about it, I think. One is uh, by learning what Buddha had suggested in the form of uh, philosophy, I think. Of course, that came later in time when great beings like Nagarjuna and Asanga and Vasubandhu uh, came into being. So they really sort of took the time uh, to describe what Buddha was saying uh, during his lifetime. Although he lived a very, very long life, nevertheless, even when you live that long in a human span of 100 years, one could say, uh, you can only express so much, you know. So therefore Buddha had to really sort of, in his entire lifetime, summarize as much as possible and to uh, yet expressing everything. And so therefore he had to really sort of teach in a form where everything is almost, not, not really to say encrypted, but somehow um, using the language at the that, at that time that existed to really um, it's in its full ability. And that's what uh, um, the Sanskrit and Pali, uh, that kind of um, language um, holds that kind of ability, I think, that in one word, you could summarize so many things. Yeah. And it's not an encryption at the same time. You know? And therefore, uh, later on, before, of course, uh, before Buddha's passing, he already predicted that uh, later, after so many, so many years, then someone, someone will come to, uh, to explain more about this subject and that subject. And accordingly, then all the great Mah uh, Mahasiddhas or Mah Mahabodhisattvas came. Yeah? Like if you think that of uh, Nagarjuna, he was both uh, relatable as uh, Mahasiddha as well as uh, Mahabodhisattva. So then uh, they basically describe the philosophy, yeah, because um, to our uh, human mind, philosophy is kind of important, you know, it's an important part of life. Without the philosophy, uh, we feel a little handicapped actually sometimes. And so therefore then um, those great uh, bodhisattvas actually uh, explained the Buddha Dharma that Buddha has taught in forms of philosophies, yeah. in various formats. Actually, the sound is good. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that's much. Thank you. So it's the sound of nature, in a way. You know? And um, so it's that philosophy uh, that was taught. And so now, as I said, there are two approaches. Yes, one is through the philosophy because we associate ourselves with philosophy, so therefore going through that direction, then we touch uh, uh, some core aspects of the Buddha Dharma, particularly in this case, meditation. So that's one way. The other way is uh, just by following uh, what is most natural to us, which is by following one's heart, one could say. Yeah. And that is uh, to try to connect with the basic principles of, of, of life, yeah? such as that of compassion. Uh, well, probably compassion is still a very, maybe in some ways it's sort of noble and uh, sort of spiritual uh, term, 